This is History Net reviewing Far Cry Primal with Jackson Wheat. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right today. How are you? And I hope that sounded all right. Could be better, could be worse. Okay. Far Cry Primal is a video game that was released uh, several years ago that takes place in the uh, Mesolithic era of the Stone Age between the Upper Paleolithic and the Neolithic. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> interesting game. <laughs> you kind of play a lot of elements. Yeah. You play a cro Magnon tribe leader who's friends were killed in an ambush by a saber-toothed tiger while you're hunting mammoths. And you uh, go throughout this new valley you migrate to and unite mankind against other prehistoric creatures and other types of human. Strangely, though, the Neanderthals are also present, which died out like 30 to 20,000 years before the game takes place, which is 10,000 B.C., like, Young Earth Creationist time, that's before the beginning of the universe. <laughs> Keep that in mind. And your other rival tribes are proto-Mesopotamian uh, uh, colonists, which is 5,000 years too early. The Zila. Uh, yeah. And the Neanderthal tribe would be the Udam, which is obviously a reference to the Ulam tribe, who were the protagonists of Quest for Fire. If you haven't seen that, oh. don't watch it. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. So, how accurate would you say this game is? <laughs> Not terribly. Um, yeah, like you said, there's the, the Udom tribe, which uh, you see kind of, or you, you see very early on when you're like rescuing the the woman from the the saber tooth cat. Uh, it's when you get the first good look at him. You see they've got the the large brow ridge and the large nose and everything, uh, or very prominent brow ridge. And uh, like you said, you got the Mesopotamians or the Proto Mesopotamians who are you know far too early. So you've got a lot of anachronisms kind of being weaved together. Uh, you've also got anachronisms in terms of fauna, from what I can tell. Uh, for instance, I was just the other day because uh, I was thinking about this while I was playing. I came across what I think was a brontothere in the game because the game has its its woolly rhinos with the, the big horns, but there's another group of rhino-like uh, uh, odd-toed mammals called brontotheres. They're more closely related to horses, though, than rhinos, even though they look more like rhinos. And I came across one in the game, but as near as I can understand it, they had been long extinct by, you know, the, by the Holocene. So, I think cave bears were also extinct by that time. Uh, yeah, possibly. The, the mammoths were on the decline. There weren't a whole lot of the the most or the last mammoths to survive were with the the Channel Islands mammoths, I think, uh, which were these these dwarf mammoths out in uh, was it off the coast of California, I think. Yeah, there's a uh, variety of uh, other species of animals that were probably not around in that area. The game takes place somewhere between uh, Germany and Poland. Does it? Because that's interesting. Yeah, I would have figured it would have been in Southeast Asia, based on the, also on the fauna. It has uh, doles, the dogs that yeah. are running around. Those are, it's a Southeast Asian canid. And strangely, they're South American uh, jaguars. That's right. Yeah, they, well, they also have uh, tapers, which yeah. are which are, are in Southeast Asia and also South America. Uh, so yeah, a real mix of fauna. Once you think of the game as time compression, you can have more fun with it, right? Like yeah. the like the movie uh, Ten Thousand BC that drove me nuts. <laughs> I I vaguely remember that. That was the one where he he saves the saber tooth cat, right? 
Yeah. And there's like the uh, they use the mammoths to move. They were building uh, with ziggurats, wasn't it? Ziggurats and pyramids, which was thousands and thousands of years too early. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I remember bits and pieces of that, not a whole lot. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I enjoy uh, Quest for Fire a lot more better. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that one. It came out back in the early 80s, and basically they look for fire. This was before humans could made fire from scratch before they had to steal it from nature and this these homo erectus tribes uh, ransacked the neanderthal dwellings and yeah hmm. uh, i think the oldest um the oldest continual uh fire or the oldest or man-made continual uh fireplaces are a few hundred thousand years old if i remember correctly I don't think there's anything, uh, any man-made fire pits older than that, older than a few hundred thousand years, uh, which kind of ties into uh, softening foods, which had an impact on our uh, jaw size and you know, tooth shape and all that, which, you know, combine that with making tools and uh, pseudogenization of certain muscle genes and so you get that's why we have much reduced musculature or jaw musculature when compared with other great apes like gorillas and chimps the discovery of um and the use of fire is the the next major step in human human evolution after the primitive tools used by australopithecus and then further made sophisticated by uh, homo habilis yeah yeah, the the old Duan and uh, Acheulean tools are the are the oldest uh, industry. Are the oldest industry is then the Neanderthals had their own specific tool industry in Europe, I believe, which was the the Mousterian uh, industry. If I remember correctly, it may have been either Homo habilis or Homo erectus that discovered fire. Not discovered. Uh, started using fire uh, about two million years ago, if I remember. Like by the by the time the game starts, it's already well perfected. So, right, yeah. I mean, you can just you know light your spear and start attacking things. It's also very sadistically fun to <laughs> shoot flaming arrows. At them. Yeah, and you can um, and you can upgrade your weapons that when you um when you come across all these plants and wood and rocks, which you uh, it would be wise to pick them up every single time you come across them because you're going to need them sooner or later. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Oh, yeah, well, that's another anachronism, the, the grapple hook. Yeah. No one was probably running around with grapple hooks 10,000 years ago, scaling you know, vertical cliffs and all that. Not that we know of, anyway. <laughs> but we yeah, do know... Really. Yeah, but we do know in the Mesolithic era that tools were more sophisticated than they were during the previous upper paleolithic time. Right. Right. Yeah. The, of course the, I guess I'm not really surprised they had to grapple because I think most of the other games feature a grapple hook. I know, uh, Far Cry three certainly does. And what makes this game unique is that it's just about the only video game I can think of that takes place around the time of the um, like when you start to use um, can't remember what was it anyway yeah but it, it takes place it's one of those rare games that takes place during the stone age and the only one that we know of that cavemen are directly involved yeah yeah I think I think this game carries that title as the, the first uh, at least the first good caveman game <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar off the top of my head with any other ones, but I do really enjoy and appreciate this game. Of course, all the Far Cry games are, are fun, as far as I've played. This is the only Far Cry game I've played, but my, it was developed by Ubisoft, the team behind the Assassin's Creed series. Yeah, yeah, there. I've played a little bit of Assassin's Creed, but not a whole lot. Uh what else? Uh, oh, their use of of uh, 
sort of animist religion. I right. think that's sort of interesting. How, because, I mean, you know, you have a shaman uh, who's got his mystical powders and whatnot. Yeah, and and so he's, you know, he's doing all this stuff for, to help the different people. And uh, it's like, well, we don't really know. I think the oldest is the oldest one to date uh, Hinduism, but of course that doesn't go back to 10,000 BC. Right. Religion. The, go ahead. Yeah. Religion in general goes back uh, 50,000 BC, around the time of behavioral modernity, which, according to older creationist uh, chronology, would be when Adam and Eve lived. Intriguing. Uh, and yeah, the, they... in this game, you um, you play Cro-Magnon and unite mankind for the first time since then. Right, yeah. it's uh, This is like the major coming together of of the Homo sapiens, because the the Neanderthals and the well the Azila, who are also Homo sapiens, they all seem very uh, they're in their fairly large groups also, but of course we're the good guys, so we're uniting all the good guy. Uh, uh, but I do think it's interesting that it's this you know it's this animist religion, which I guess kind of makes sense. There are a lot of that's kind of the, I guess that's considered by, uh, to be like the, the primitive form of religion generally. It's like the, the yeah. animism and then you have a, a set of deities or a deity and it kind of you know, progresses from there. There's these statue, there's these, this statuette of the, I can't pronounce how you, uh, don't know how you pronounce it. It's called the L something. It was a statuette of a cave lion, which, they may have seen God as back then. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's right. The uh, the the Udom have the uh, the the very famous right statue of the woman, which <laughs> was not yeah. made by Neanderthals. But <laughs> yeah, there's 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 problems with that. Yeah. The stone woman may have been. Um, you could either look at it two ways. You could look at it as um, a statue of God back during the Upper Paleolithic. Or just a random carving of a Cro Magna women. Like they have, there's numerous ones of those. And the right. and Neanderthals did not have religion that we know of. Right. It's very, the arguments for them are very, or the arguments for Neanderthals having religion are very uh, contentious. Uh, and since we really don't have any, well, I mean, Culture in general is very hard to preserve through the fossil record. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a few smatterings of evidence for fire throughout the recent fossil record. We have a few tool industries over the past uh, few million years. But, you know, what, what was what was the culture of you know, different tribes of Homo erectus, for instance, if they had culture at all. Well, we'll never know, probably, because these sorts of things uh, don't lend themselves to be incorporated into the fossil record. Yeah, there's this really good documentary. You've probably seen it, uh, Walking with Cavemen. They've shown uh, Homo erectus like two million years ago, and then they fast forward one million years ago and see uh, what tools are they using now. It's the same stone axe that Homo ergaster, which is basically the same species, Used a million years beforehand, their technology has not advanced in all that time. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, when you were taught by your father, who was taught by his father, who was taught by his father, to to bang two rocks together to make uh, a little hand axe, you know, why change it? <laughs> yeah, like like you don't think about it; you just do it, like how a bird builds its nest. Right, and there's interesting uh, talk about did they leave certain or tools in certain places while they were hunting so that you know when they when the antelope and whatnot migrated would they come back to these same locations where they bury their tools the year before you know so they wouldn't have to craft tools as they went really which i think yep. is an interesting idea as for the religion of the proto-mesopotamians the izila they were basically sun worshippers that's right. Yeah, they're very obsessed with fire. And for some reason, there's this. Uh, they were 
painted in blue, which is kind of references the Mayans from Apocalypto, which themselves <laughs> were based on the Aztecs, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a daisy chain of wrong, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's wow. no so. That's pretty funny. Well, you know, you gotta get the you gotta get them in somehow, I guess. Uh, but yeah, you know, the uh there are a lot of really interesting hypotheses as to how and what the early religions were like, uh, but we might never, uh, we might never know, uh, simply because we are the only, we're the last man standing, uh, and we're the only organisms that seems to have religion, and the uh, our closest living relatives don't display any religious tendencies. It, as we define it in normal sense, not like how Ken Ham and his groupies define it as like something you hold in high passion or high I was, regard. I was hoping not to profane this game review with his name. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we can cut that part out. <laughs> uh, but the yeah. we don't really know if any of our other or how far back religion goes. For instance, if it goes back very far at all. Um, we're pretty sure it goes back fifty thousand years when, when yeah. we, when the Big Bang of human consciousness took place, and then we started to create art and all those other things that make us definitively human. Fifty thousand years ago, interesting. I'll have to look. I'll have to read up on that, I guess, because the the agricultural revolution was was ten thousand BC. Right, where this yeah. game takes place. Yeah. Yeah. It's not not to do any spoilers, but for the epilogue, it's basically you start one of your tribesmen who you recruit starts to farm or plant oh. seeds. Okay. Hmm. Um, uh, because yeah, uh, we kind of divide uh, humans into the archaic Homo sapiens and modern Homo sapiens, and uh, the Cro Magnon are just one of the. The groups of, of modern Homo sapiens, and strangely, the Neanderthals were depicted as cannibalistic. Yeah, I don't really understand that. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't have any reason to like, suggest they were cannibals. Like in the context of the game, they're trying. They thought eating humans would gain them strength to withstand the bitter cold, the the last push of the ice age back then. Yeah, it's it's very interesting because I mean, you know, you want to withstand the cold make clothes. There are lots of large woolly animals still around we can kill and skin to make clothes. Neanderthals were also depicted as more sophisticated in this game, but also more brutish, which they probably weren't. Like, there's the stereotype that they were these dumb brutes, but that's right. likely not the case. We see animals that are more intelligent than that, like, um, like dogs and dolphins and it would stand the reason the Neanderthals were intelligent to some extent. Oh yeah, I mean, we have uh, records of them caring for like the disabled, for instance. Uh, there are it's like there's there are skeletons of <clears throat> guy of, of people who were like disabled and showed signs of healing and whatnot, and so you know we could tell okay they took care of yeah these these people and i mean they were just our sister species or just one of our sister species right. uh it was homo sapiens homo neanderthalensis uh the denisovans who the, were the denisovans were african neanderthals if i remember oh they were uh asian yeah asian african. well they were well they weren't neanderthals they were another species uh we were all different species and there was limited interbreeding among all of them uh, which is why yeah. people of Southeast Asian descent have some ne have some Denisovan DNA, and people of European descent have some Neanderthal DNA. And by the time uh, that the Upper Paleolithic, which was defined by behavioral modernity, it was just us and Neanderthals who were copying us later on. But after they died out, it was also the Red Deer Cave people in China, which, if I remember, died just a few thousand years before the game takes place. I'm not really familiar with them. What were they doing? It, what we know is that they are just cooking red deer in a cave, which is why they call them that. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, there is, uh, interestingly enough, evidence of a 
there's another human species that was in uh, or that interbred with the Melanesians, but and they they left some genetic evidence in in modern Melanesians. That's really all we know about it. We don't have any fossils of it. Yeah, that's the name of the people. They may be um, they're uh, genetic successors in a way, like how Caucasians and Asians share a bit of Neanderthal DNA since they interbred. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anthropology sure is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Because you have your uh, get Erectus, uh, who you know left Africa and went all over Eurasia, and then later uh, you had the Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis branching out of Erectus in Africa, who then also left Africa and colonized elsewhere. Uh, Ergaster and Erectus were the same species, right? Yeah, Ergaster is uh, sometimes called the the African Erectus. Yeah, and the Erectus in China or the Chinese uh, Erectus, Ergaster. Yeah, anyway. The, yeah. Well, it also depends on which anthropologist you ask because they get into bar fights over this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but as, and as for religion, the earliest we can trace uh, all the modern religions today and throughout history go back to the uh, Proto-Indo-European religion, which also recalled uh, first man and woman, a uh, tree of life, serpentine divine being that stole immortality for man, uh, God battling the chaos dragon, stuff like that. I think that Trey the Explainer did a video about that. Yeah, he did that on Levi- his Leviathan video. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. That was a neat video. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know it's kind of interesting. I mean, you you got to have a uh, an origin story for the things you see in your everyday life. You know, right. why do we wear clothes? Oh, we wear clothes because we were tricked and cast out of a paradise. You know, uh, uh, why do we eat meat? Right. Why do we eat meat? Why do we do this? Why do we do that? And so you got to have a story, which you know, uh, not necessarily you know wasn't necessarily just invented out of thin air. Right. Uh, it might have had some you know kernel of of truth to it, or it was just how they perceived something. They just perceived this other or this time period, or they were told about it as you know as time had gone on the stories about their ancestors got more and more uh kind of out there i think that was uh what the was it the mayans did with their rulers like the ages of their rulers got longer and longer and longer the further you went from when they lived and like, like that. yeah and like the sumerian kings list who were said to have lived tens of thousands of years which is stylistic right exactly yeah and so, uh, and so, you know, it, make, it makes sense. The Chinese em- various Chinese emperors of the past were said to live that long ago. Right. Yeah. Uh, of course, flood legends have an obvious, you know, basis in in reality. Right. Uh, everybody, you, know, you got to settle by a body of water, <laughs> you know, whether for fishing or for drinking. And then when it rains, it floods. And so, and usually a man or a man or a king survives on a boat and repopulates with his wife and kids. In most yeah, versions. yeah, that's in a lot of um, I think a lot of Eurasian ones. That of course the stories are you know all over the place. If you look at like uh, Austri- was it Aust- Aborigines, I think there's like a rainbow serpent, or uh, there's all sorts of different ones. I think Talk Origins has a really interesting page comparing different cultures of uh, flood stories. But uh, there's also a language, uh, the language of the game, which is proto proto Indo European, which is why you can hear traces of uh, Indian language. You can hear traces of uh, Greek and uh, really stuff among those lines. Huh? Yeah, like Oros was the Greek word for valley, I think. Huh? That's pretty neat. I I would never guess that. It's pretty interesting. And the uh, scenery is also heartbreakingly beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's extremely immersive going from this lush, 
jungle to a uh, forested region, you know, uh, with the snow and everything. That's really as far as I've gotten. It looks yeah. like there might be some volcanoes or something <clears throat> at one, on one part of the map. But I'm not positive. No, I don't think there's volcanoes, but no there's, volcanoes. There's, okay. there's snow mountains. You can just look. You can go in the tundra area at night and look up at the mountains. It's it's just beautiful. How um, it, cavemen looked up at the night sky and mountains for tens of thousands of years and looking at all. Yeah, uh, I remember some. I heard someone once say the first uh, was the first scientist was an astronomer. You know. Maybe, because you got to look up at the stars and you know, figure out uh, when winter's coming or when summer's coming and uh, which direction to go, things like that. And during the day, there's the beauty of the uh, lush, thick redwood forests of Germany or Poland, whichever which. Back in the Stone Age. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, lots of stuff we don't really have anymore. <laughs> There's also Easter game, Easter uh, eggs in the game as well. There's um, there's a reference to Metal Gear, and met reference to Assassin's Creed, and a reference to the Flintstones. Even <laughs> you, you go at the bottom of a certain lake and you find the um, the car he Fred Flintstone used. That's great. Yabba dabba do. Yep, that is pretty funny. I actually used a. The a picture of the Flintstones for a video I did on uh, this guy named Beyond Science. Uh, <laughs> Flintstones archaeology. Yeah, because he's like, uh, he's, I don't think he's a young Earth creationist. He's just a conspiracy theorist, but he was using young Earth creationist stuff. It's very bizarre. But uh, regardless, that is pretty funny. I'll have to be on the lookout for that. Uh, last time I was in one of the lakes, I got attacked by a uh, a fish. A large yeah. A toothed fish. Oh. Yeah, bite fish. Yeah, the bite fish. Uh, I don't know what those are the analog of other than horrifying fish. <laughs> there's a, and there's um <clears throat> there's also boss levels in the game, which are the um the saber tooth cat that attacked your party at the beginning of the game. <laughs> then there's then there's this uh, mega cave bear and there's a pack of snow wolves which when they work together they're a deadly trail and there's uh this giant mammoth in the tundra area oh yeah yeah those are the boss, those are the boss levels apart from the leader of the neanderthals and the proto mesopotamians hmm. i haven't come across i mean i know where the saber tooth cat is i see him on the map but i have not gotten to him yet because i'm still kind of in the main area running yeah. missions and stuff and uh just got the ability to ride mammoths so that's something sweet yeah I'm pretty sure cavemen weren't riding mammoths or saber tooth t- tigers either but that's a fast way for a tramp that's a reliable way of transportation <laughs> yeah uh they also did that in uh wasn't it brother bear they they rode mammoths uh no just no. Yeah, it's like, uh, no. No one was... Uh, when you saw an elephant, you saw food or death, not a ride. <laughs> and after you defeat each boss level, you recruit them on your party and have them fight other animals so you don't have to worry about being attacked every time you turn around. Yeah, that's what I really appreciate about the wolf. Is that... Uh, you have If you have the wolf with you or any... I probably would save it to the cats too, but all I have is the wolf. Uh, it scares off things like doles and other wolves, so that they're not they're not going to come mess with you because you've got him with you. Yeah, you can train a variety of animals when you <clears throat> upgrade. You talk to the shaman, and then when you upgrade about weapons, you talk to one of the other crow magnet you rescue and recruit to your tribe. Yeah, you um, go- I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you also upgrade the village whenever you can and get as many resources as you can because that'll help you when in further in the game. Also, when you attack the other um, Neanderthal and Proto Mesopotamia ports, uh, forts, I said ports, uh, 
their forts and reclaim them as your own and bonfire set, uh, posts. Yep, that's also a carryover from the uh, the older Far Cry games. The posts. Because you got to do that in Far Cry 3. You go around and take the the forts from the bad guys and you know, calling your guys to come and take it over and whatnot. And the, uh, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was, I was. Oh yeah, I forgot the uh, the dog, the the wolf. I think it's it's supposed to be like a kind of a nod to you know domestication of the wolf, but into yeah. the dog. But dogs had already been domesticated by that point, right? By like uh, twelve thousand years ago, something like that. Yeah, there's a movie out there that came out recently. It's called uh, Alpha. Oh yeah, I, I never uh, saw that. I probably should. Yeah, you should. <laughs> and also, the the Crow Magnum Village is fairly accurate for that time. The mud yeah. huts. Yeah, I just got the. Uh, you're just taking like you know furs and sticks and mud and whatnot, and fashioning these pretty simple huts. Of course, your your character uh, Takar lives in a cave. Right. He's the caveman. <laughs> <laughs> and the Neanderthals, who were the cavemen, they just live in caves. And uh, the Proto-Mesopotamians, they live in uh, these lake houses that didn't come around until the later Neolithic times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I said, time compression. Yeah, they also... Uh, the the forts that the Udon build are very, are very intricate forts. Uh, I mean, they have like spikes, you know. Yeah. They take they take sharpen sticks and have make them spikes like ringing the camp, uh, and things like that. Uh, pretty sure that wasn't in use, but uh, oh well. They're more sophisticated, but more sophisticated, more sophisticated and more sadistic in this game than in real life, probably. Right. Actually. I mean, depends. If they have their own personalities, like dogs have their own personalities, but yeah, it, it would depend on the person. Yeah, I mean, they're just people just like us, you know, a little bit different, but yeah. pretty much the same. They're just our sister, our sister species. Um, but yeah, in the game, they're just, you know, brutish uh, animals and to kill you. So, yep. And so are the, um, the Proto Mesopotamians, us basically. Yeah, they're all about you know capturing people, burning things, and all that. And uh, it's like, why? Neanderthals yeah, eating people, and the Proto Mesopotamians uh, sacrificing them. Yeah, let's leave that to the Aztecs to <laughs> yeah. sacrifice people. I don't know some that you know wouldn't be far sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, sacrifice culture has probably cropped up more than once. Uh, I cropped up in Eurasia also. I don't know what the frequency of that and, was. But. And the shaman Rafiki was burned up by the Proto-Mesopotamians. Which is why... Oh. He, yeah, that's why he looks uh, like that. Was he? Okay. Oh, yeah. There's the, the guy who got his arm... The, 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 the tool maker who got his arm eaten by the Udon. Yeah. A cruel and, twist of fate. <laughs> and, he, and he pisses on you when he meets you. Literally. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yes, he did. And there's also the, the hunter. This uh, this old woman. It's old by then. She's the one that introduces you to the... Um, that points out the, um, the bosses on your map. Yeah. There's also the, um, the warrior that looks like Solid Snake. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the bandana over his... Uh, and the uh, his missing eye. Oh yeah, I just met him recently. Wait, wait, not not saw a snake, a uh, naked snake, a uh, big boss. It yeah. looks like him, kind of. I I just met the uh, the guy with the the bandana over his eye. Yeah, yeah, he's an interesting character. Uh, and there's there's two more characters you have to recruit. There's a you recruit and you end up recruiting a Neanderthal and a Proto Mesopotamian on your side. One will help you uh, get inside information on the uh, how to attack the Neanderthals, and then the um, Proto Mesopotamian will do the same for them. And also, he'll be the one to uh, start 
agriculture around that time. <laughs> of course, of course. I didn't spoil too much, did I? A <laughs> uh, little bit, but that's all right. <laughs> I mean, the game's been out for a few years, so I think yeah. it, it's all right at this point. <laughs> yeah. Spoiling's a little bit okay. Um, is there anything else that is like out of time or really interesting about it? Uh, let's see. Other than the species of animal, the certain type of uh, fauna and flora. There's, uh... Yeah, it's it is really their their use of fauna is very interesting. It's it's a mix of places. Uh, you know, Southeast Asian critters, uh, plus like uh, the more northern animals because mammoths and woolly rhinos. Basically, uh, Stone Age, the feel of Stone Age Europe with time compressed together. Yep. Yep. Fun times. Yeah. And chronologically. Obviously, chronologically, it tends a thousand years before the Assassin's Creed series, which itself spans human history, but it's within... I played the... one of those. Yeah. I played the Revolutionary War one. That was pretty fun. Oh, yeah. You got to play the first one, the second one during the Crusades and the Renaissance. Yeah, that's right. I do remember the the Renaissance one. That one was very popular. Yeah. That's almost anonymous, anonymously considered the best one. You don't have to get it. It's for PS3, right? Yeah. Okay. Might as well. And the the Assassin's Creed Easter egg is where you, you help this one caveman that um, he tries to come up with all these inventions, you know, primitive for that time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of gag jokes in there, but one of them, he jumps off a cliff and accidentally lands on um he tries to fly like with two bird feathers like yeah try to accomplish human flight but ends up falling down and landing on hay <laughs> yep that does sound familiar even the assassin's creed a theme of uh two plays <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> hmm that's interesting. So what would you say is accurate about this game overall, and how would you rate it? Uh, I think in terms of a number of the the fauna were were around at that time. Mammoths, woolly rhinos, saber-toothed cats. These were indeed around at that time, but they were shortly to go extinct uh, because you know, due to climatic shifts and humans and other sorts of things. Uh. I think for the most part, a lot of the weaponry seems pretty normal for that time. Spears, uh, bow and arrow, uh, probably club. I don't know. Yeah, likely club. The The gameplay, we forgot to touch on the gameplay. It is pretty good for that time, considering. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the normal uh, Far Cry sort of gameplay. All the, the controls are the same. It's, you know, uh, hiding in bushes and uh, running and all sorts of stuff. It's all pretty normal for the the Far Cry games. Which is pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty easy to navigate. And the... Uh, <clears throat> so would you, on a 1 to 10 on the accuracy scale... One to ten on accuracy? Yeah. Uh, I give it a six, I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, in terms of, of fun, you know, eight or nine. But but yeah, accuracy, I like give it like a six. <laughs> yeah. There are people and there are animals. <laughs> and both. Yep. And so, but not at the same time. <laughs> Any closing thoughts? Uh, buy the game today. Available in the App Store. And <laughs> Please, Ubisoft, send us money. We will hawk your wares.
go to GameStop at your nearest mall immediately. Right, exactly. Is it is it the same uh, company that made Zoo Tycoon? No, it's Ubisoft. They're behind uh, Assassin's Creed. It's what they're mostly known for. They did uh, Spore, though, didn't they? I don't know. I think Ubisoft did Spore, but no, Zoo Tycoon is a different one. That's a different it's like the snake. No, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. No, that's not Ubisoft, I don't think. I know what you're referring to, though. I want to play for Jack and Savannah. Well, regardless, that's not what we're talking about, Savannah. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so really fun game. And I like it a lot. Yep. I'm glad I got it. And excited to continue playing it. Okay, so. this has been History Net and Weedy Jackson reviewing uh, Far Cry Primal. See you next time.